Hi, this is the overview for 1 Thessalonians. The reason we're giving this letter two weeks and 2 Thessalonians only one week is because of the introductory information in the first letter. In 1 Thessalonians, we have this church that even surprised the Apostle Paul. In spite of severe persecution at the onset of preaching, people were being saved and showing great faith and they were reaching out. Certainly, one week can be given to exploring what kind of faith and truth would enable something like this to happen. The second important part of 1 Thessalonians is that Paul gave them a lot of teaching on the second coming. One Sunday could be devoted to this. So why did Paul give them so much teaching on the second coming? And what teaching events are part of what Paul shared with them? Why was it important to them, and why is it important to us? Chapter 1. This chapter is easy to pass over quickly. Explore what Paul is saying. What kind of working of the Spirit is required to have something like this happen? We face so little persecution, it's hard for us to understand this as a miracle. Paul, who had been a persecutor of the church, recognized the incredible working of the Spirit, the faith, in the heartfelt reception of the word. That these people were willing to believe was one thing. To suffer was also a big thing. But to keep telling others and keep going, being so young in their faith, this is what made Paul marvel. It might be that Paul hadn't seen faith like this since he himself had tried to force believers to blaspheme Jesus. Notice the final sentence. Waiting for Jesus' expectancy, being delivered from the wrath to come, is special in that it's talking about the day of the Lord, a period of time, and a very well-defined event. Paul was telling them all of this, not just for biblical knowledge, but to help them have hope. Chapters 2 and 3, these chapters are autobiographical. Paul tells them of how the situation became one of affection for them and evidence of the great work God was doing. Along with this work of the Lord was Satan's resistance and God moving them to become trophies of his grace. Chapters 4 and 5. There are a lot of practical commands in these chapters, but the main attraction here is the mention of the rapture at the end of chapter 4 to the middle of chapter 5. Now, the discussion of the rapture is an interesting challenge for two reasons. First, you'll need to understand the rapture and how this detail can only be understood as the taking of the church before the tribulation. The second challenge is that since this church believes in the pre-trib rapture, while you may have another view, your job, in accordance with the teaching of this church and its elders, is to support this view, even if you have another opinion. The long and the short of this is that you need to present the pre-trib rapture as if you believe it. And even if you believe in it, you need to understand it so you can present it clearly. Make sure you put 4, 14 through 16 together with 1 Corinthians 15, 51, and 52. There it says, we will not only be gathered, but we will also be instantly changed. Also, notice that in chapter 5, the meaning of those who are asleep has the idea of those who are not really ready or paying attention. Those who sleep will be surprised, but those who are awake won't be surprised. Jesus talked about this all the time. So enjoy learning more about the rapture and enjoy presenting the story of these incredible believers. Maranatha.